Hello and welcome. So in this session, we are going to talk about resilient distributed data set, RDD. As we discussed in the last video, a resilient distributed data set is available in the Spark core at, at a lower level API. Uh, it's basically, uh, it was one of the interfaces available in the earlier versions of Spark. In the later versions of Spark, there are higher level abstractions available like uh, data sets and data frames. But uh, RDD is still a very, very important concept to be understood if you are learning Spark. So let's quickly look at what an RDD is. So by definition, an RDD is resilient distributed data set. Resilient means that it, it can recover from any hardware failures or node failures. Even if let's say some of the nodes in your cluster go down, it can quickly recover from those failures without the developer or user taking any manual intervention. Distributed, uh, as the name suggests, it means that your data is going to be distributed across the nodes in your cluster. And data set means that it contains data, right? Now, <clears throat> let's look at this example. Let's say you have, you know, some data set. It contains a list of numbers. Now, traditionally, what you generally do is if you want to process this data, you would load this data into some kind of a data structure, some array, link list, map, or, or any data structure, right? You would iterate over that data structure and then you would perform the operations that you want to perform on, on let's say, each row. And finally, you will use your result the way you want to use it. You might store it in a database, you might store it in a text file, or you want to send it further, uh, you know, for downstream systems to consume it. But the problem with that approach is that when your data set is huge, all your data still lies on a single machine your array or your linked list cannot be distributed across machines, right? So what Spark does is using RDDs, it can actually distribute your data across machines. So if you look at this picture, uh, your original data set, let's say contains eight rows. Once you create an RDD from this data, Spark will partition in, it into multiple partitions. So number of partitions can be controlled by you, but let's not get into those details as of now. We will discuss those details in future videos. For, for the moment, let's say Spark creates four partitions out of it, right? The first partition contains first two rows, second partition contains next two, third partition contains next two, and the last partition contains the last two rows. Now, uh, internally, Spark can actually distribute these four partitions on two different machines. And any operations that you are performing on this on, on this data set can be actually run in parallel on all those partitions on, on different machines, right? So which makes the processing very, very fast. So uh, in, in summary, RDD is just like a data structure, but it's distributed across machines and it is resilient enough to recover from hardware failures. We'll obviously get into more details and hands-on uh, later, but from the concept point of view, it's just a distributed data structure that you can use to process your data. Uh, now, how do you create an RDD? So your source data could be present in a text file, it could be present in a, a distributed file system, it could be present in a database, it could be present in a you know, NoSQL database like Cassandra, or, or there, are, there could be hundreds other, you know, uh, source systems where your uh, data is present. So Spark does provide a lot of options for you to actually read data from these sources and then convert that into uh, an RDD. The entry point into uh, Spark to create an RDD is a Spark context object, which you get by default when you are using Spark shell, but when you are writing your own jobs, you explicitly create a, a Spark context object. Uh, one simplest way of creating an RDD is you simply can hard code your data into a list and then you can use the parallelize function. Uh, it's actually Spark context dot parallelize. Uh, as I said, Spark context is an object that is basically your entry point into uh, Spark ecosystem. But obviously, you would not be using the parallelize function too much because if you can really hard code your data into this list, that means your data is not really big data and you would not be even using Spark. It's just for, you know, uh, testing purpose and understanding purpose that we are using parallelize here. So what happens is when you uh, use this first example, RDD1 is equal to sc.parallelize, it basically creates all the partitions for you just like this. Okay. And then uh, after that, you can obviously start performing your operations. And similarly, uh, you can uh, use 
your source data from a text file, from SDFS, from S3, from JDBC, Cassandra, HBase, and there are many other, uh, many other options from where you can read your data and create your RDBs. We'll obviously look at different options when we start hands-on coding in next sessions. Now, once you have an RDD from your source data, what do you really do with it? So the purpose of you know writing Spark jobs or using Spark is to actually transform your data, do some kind of processing on your data, right? So then uh, there are a lot of transformations available that you can actually apply to your RDD. So map, for example, is one of the widely used transformations. What it does is basically you know runs your business logic on each row in that RDD. And as we saw earlier, because there are multiple partitions available on different machines within your cluster, whatever business logic you provide using the map function, it will run in parallel on all those partitions. So as an example, uh, if you apply this function on your uh, uh, RDD, base RDD, where you are basically multiplying each and every row by two, right? Uh, it'll actually run in parallel on all those four partitions that we saw earlier. Uh, then there are other transformations like flat map, filter, distinct sample, and there are many more transformations. We will discuss these transformations in detail in other lectures, but from concept point of view, you can apply different transformations based on your need uh, on, on any RD. So what happens is when you apply a transformation, it basically returns you another RDD. And then you can apply other transformation on, on that new RDD and it'll again return you an RDD. And it's basically a series of RDDs that you keep getting. And finally, you can apply some kind of action on the final RDD to get the results back to the driver, right? So let's uh, look at some of the actions. So once you have applied all your transformations, you can apply some of these actions and basically get your result back to the driver. For example, collect is something that collects all the partitions together and returns them to the driver. And then you can probably save that into a text file or a database. Count is something that uh, you know returns you the number of rows in the final RDD. Uh, and similarly, there are other actions that we will discuss when we start hands-on coding. Uh, but the idea here is that you apply some transformations on your RDDs and then you apply some action and finally you get your result back. And the biggest advantage of doing this through RDDs is that all the processing is happening in parallel. So the more the hardware that you have, more the speed that you'll get. Right. So here is what uh, exactly is happening in a pictorial form. So lineage means that when you are applying a transformation on, on your RDDs, it's basically recording. Spark is basically recording that, okay, from RDD1, you applied transformation one and you got RDD2. And from RDD2, you apply its transformation two and you got RDD3 and so on, right? So it's basically recording all those transactions. And that is basically what is called lineage. And once you are done with all your transformations, then you apply an action and you get the result back. And this is the place actually uh, where, uh, if you if you remember, we discussed about directed acyclic graphs in our last video, DAG. This is where DAG comes into picture. So when you are applying transformations one after the other, Right, Spark is actually not executing anything at that moment. It's it's uh, in in other language it's called lazy evaluation. We'll talk about lazy evaluation in detail in another video as well. But what's happening is Spark is just recording that you want to apply this transformation after this transformation after this transformation, right? And once you have uh, you know uh, defined all your transformations, then DAG comes into picture where Spark you know, collects all those transformations together and then comes up with an optimized uh, execution strategy for your DAG. So that um, you are not really doing one thing after the other in the series. If there are some things that can be combined together into one step instead of, let's say, two different steps, then Spark will do that and it'll make the program more efficient, right? Uh, so this is what uh, the lazy evaluation is that I was talking about. So transformations do not really trigger any real execution. It is just being recorded. So when you are saying, let's say, uh, you, when you are applying map on your RDD, it's not really moving any data or doing any processing on your data. It's just recording that this data needs to be processed <clears throat> with this business logic. Only when you apply an action, let's say you say uh, collect or count on that RDD after map function, 
at that time it will go ahead and then execute that map function right so only an action triggers real execution and as i said directed day cyclic graph comes into picture at this moment all right that's a very high level uh, overview of what an rdd is from next session we will actually start doing some hands on coding where we will create rdd we'll apply some transformations and then we'll apply some actions to see uh, things actually happen uh, with spark rdds that's all for this session thank you